Welcome to this edition of the Whole Roofing and Remodeling Podcast. Today, our special guest is Drew from Tree City Lube, and uh, that is a business, uh, oil change business down in Greensburg. So, Drew, welcome. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, um, about your business, and uh, we'll just kind of start with that. Okay. Yeah, I'm Drew Messer from Greensburg. I own Tree City Lube. Um, I took over last year, locally owned, only locally, locally owned one in Greensburg. Um yeah, we change oil, lawnmowers, motorcycles, anything that takes oil, we'll do it. So Okay. So how did you get yourself in that business? Well, I worked there for about a year and then the the gentleman that owned it was nice enough to work out a deal with me, so yeah. Took it over from there. Nice, nice. Uh did you go to uh any college, uh trade school, any of that? Nope. Nope. I knew I didn't want to go to college. I hated high school, so <laughs> No matter what I did, I wasn't going to school, that's for sure. Yep, so. yep. Uh, did you, I mean, are you, uh, you know, not to sound um, uh, not judgmental, I don't know what word I want, or are you a gearhead or not? Yeah, yeah, I definitely was. Uh, I'd rather work on, I'd rather go to work, and I always worked in uh, places like hands-on, so yeah. I like I like riding quads and working on motors and stuff, so I hated school, though. I just sitting in class and doing algebra. Gosh, I hate algebra. It's dumb. I don't know why they put letters and numbers together, you know? No, I get it. I get it. So uh, you work there for just about a year, and then you take it over? Yeah, so I worked, I worked there for a year, and then I've owned it for a year now, so I've been there two years. Nice. So, so right after high school, you went out there to uh, to work? Yeah, yeah. So uh, how'd it go? Let's see. I think Saturday I had graduation, and I took over on Friday. So, nice. You know, second day there, I had to go graduate, so that was nice. But That's funny you would say that because, I mean, it's been many moons ago since I graduated, but I had a hay bale in business when I was getting ready to go to college, in high school, and then getting ready to go to college. And Yeah. Uh, I missed graduation parties on Saturday because I was bailing on Sunday, yeah. <laughs> and I threatened I was going to skip graduation if I didn't get all the bailing done on, on Saturday. Yeah. So <clears throat> my dad said, um, we'll get the damn bailing figured out. He's like, you will graduate. Yeah. So I said, <laughs> and so I worked, and nobody got mad at me for working all day Saturday because I knew that I wanted to— uh, I really wanted to, well, I don't know if I wanted to walk graduation ceremony yeah, or not. Nobody like, does, I don't think so. The, the, your diploma is your diploma, you know, right. you have it there. So what, um, you know, let's talk about some challenges being um, in a small business. Let's talk about, you know, some lessons you've learned in a year, you know, um, because, I mean, kudos for you to be that ambitious at that age um, that, you know, you're really wanting to take that over. And, you know, I don't know, maybe the previous owner, maybe he, rec you know, encouraged you to do it. Maybe he tried to give you some pointers of like, hey, man, like you got to watch this or that. Because, I mean, I understand we don't like we don't like school. That's not how guys like us are wired. However, we do have to be smart enough to know at least math, like algebra, yeah. maybe not, but, you know, at least <laughs> basic math for accounting and, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, luckily my mom deals all, with all the accounting because she's a financial advisor, so I don't have to worry about any of that. But, um, yeah, the, the previous owner, he's like a role model to me. Um, I run the business a lot, a lot like he did. I looked up to him a lot. He's a great guy. Um, he ran it very well just by himself, and he had, every, he had a little trick for everything there, you know, so uh, I run it a lot like him which helps a lot doing it by myself mainly. So, but, uh, yeah, I don't have to deal with any numbers. So that's all I care about. <laughs> so speaking of that, did you get, uh, we were going to do the podcast a week or two ago and you had a slight emergency. Yeah. <laughs> you had a team member walk out on you or decide something different. Did you get somebody else hired? I did. He's starting Thursday. So okay. we'll see how that goes. So. Okay. So let's talk. Is that the first hire you've made? Oh no, that's, uh, it'd be the fourth or fifth. Okay. Yeah. So they normally quit on you? You normally got to uh, fire them? Um, well, what? The first guy is an older gentleman, and he got a better job offer, so he went and worked there. And then the second kid, he had he was in school still, and I didn't want to hire him while he was in still in school. Yep. And then third kid, he went off to Texas to go weld. So And then fourth kid, he just quit. So I'm well, the fifth now. So at least, though, a few of them's went and bettered themselves. Because yeah. as a business owner, as a leader, like we have to be willing to let 
um, somebody go if they can go spread their wings somewhere else. Right. Um, and you it's, know, it's really not a business where a young kid's gonna come work there and settle down. You know, right? So it's like you're kind of expecting it at some point. It's gonna happen. You don't want it to, but it, it happens. So. Yeah. No. I mean, absolutely. I mean, just because it's when you have entry level positions, you know, and you know, unless you decide to open up other branches right. and stuff like that, like there is gonna be a lid of where, you know, somebody, you know, somebody can go. So exactly, yeah. what, uh, just, uh, yeah, just kind of talk about some struggles or whatever with, with the business. Like I said, maybe ones that you were warned about and maybe some that you weren't expecting. It's, it's hard being young and doing it. Um, you know, people think they can take advantage of you, especially think you don't know a whole lot. Um, uh, it's, it's been, all right. Um, tell, tell me a story there. There's got to be a story there where somebody tried to take advantage of you. Oh, there's so many. It's just older. It's mainly older people coming in and uh, think you don't know what you're doing, and they try to chew you down on price or yell at you for doing this wrong or whatever. And it's just like nothing I can do about it. I'm sorry. I'm gonna do it how I do it. I do it the right way. So if you don't like it, then don't come back. You know. It's been it's been nice because both my parents are business owners and they've all dealt with all this. So yep. every time I have a problem, I just say, "What do I do?" Yep. You know, if I didn't have them, I would I would not be yelling as well as I am. <laughs> so what? Uh, so let's talk about that a little bit. Your upbringing to kind of help you um, get you know what part of your upbringing has helped you run this business at a young age. Well, I've always. I don't know. They always talked about all their struggles and stuff they've had. So I've always, I've heard a lot about it. And, uh, every time I have a problem, they'll give me an example of the problem that they had and how they dealt with it. And it kind of gives me a, a relation on how to, how to deal with it. So, but yeah, dad's, dad's been in his business for way too long now. <laughs> he's got gray hairs and that's, he's only about, well, he turned 50. So I guess that's when gray hairs come in, but Probably shouldn't look because uh, I'm in my 30s. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's bald too. It's okay. But, I still uh, got the hair. I just got the gray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mom. Mom recently just started. Well, she didn't start. She opened a opened her branch of Ameriprise Financial. It's been it's been probably three years now. I'd say, but she always worked at a worked for someone else. Um, but yeah, she's getting to. She already knows a bunch about dealing with all that so they're so, both able to help me out so what kind of business do your dad have it's a manufacturing business called mesco manufacturing um it started out as m&s okay um but he makes he makes all kinds of stuff makes stuff for the military i'm not sure i'm allowed to talk about a lot of it so i probably shouldn't but. no no i get that <laughs> is that there in greensburg yeah it's in greensburg yeah. so what uh what made you I mean, entrepreneur route, awesome. <clears throat> Any interest in going into your dad's business and working with him, or no, not really. I've, I've I've worked there a lot. Um, I like it. It's just with how much stress it brings him. I see all the stress it brings him. I just don't want to get into it. Um, but I do, I do like that line of work for sure. But I don't want to be that stressed out. I'm already that stressed out. I guess. I mean, any business owner is so. One thing I've come to here lately is stress is stress. Oh, like yeah. you just, you got to just go through it, and you know. I just, I'll, I try to imagine it's not a thing. I just. Well, or you know, look at the scenario or the problem, mm -hmm. and you know, we have this problem. You have this stress. It's actually two different things. Yeah, it's not stress because of this problem. Right. You know, and that kind of helps. Um, that kind of helps, but I guess. Once you've been running the business, there's just a certain level of stress that you just kind of naturally yeah. just flow it's, with. It's always there. That it's just, <laughs> it, it genuinely, it's like, there's certain people look at me like, you have to be so stressed. I'm like, no, not really. And I guess it's just part of just learning and just dealing with it and rolling with it. You yeah. know, at the end of the day, like if, if you believe God's calling you to be an entrepreneur and a business owner, like you're going to have days that you wonder... <laughs> Yeah. What the hell am I doing this right. for? Yeah. I mean, I will tell you a quick story. Um, I had a job that we were working on this house and it was, um, it was an older gentleman and, um, he drank warm Miller lights and I saw him at seven thirty one one morning when we started on this project. 
And so by the evenings, he was pretty drunk. Yeah. And um, at that time, my littlest one was most likely going to end up in the hospital. She wasn't feeling well that day. And the problem was he went to hire a chuck and a truck is what we call hacks that aren't professional companies that don't have a license, all that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. to do this this insurance claim. And three or four of them looked at it and was like, no, we're, we're not touching that. And it was very, it was a very complex, like multiple layers of shingles, busted rafters, busted just framing, all that. And I was like, no, we can, I can help you. Um, explained it to them, did it. And then they kept adding more and more of the inside stuff to me. I tried to get something done. I'm like, ugh. And it was just getting a little frustrated. And the problem, the problem was he waited like two months to get a hold of me because nobody, he kept waiting on other people to say they would do it. Yeah. And I remember he called me that night um, that I could tell that little Riley was probably going to end up in Riley Hospital. And he called me, and I, I was in low or Home Depot in Greenfield, and I went off on them on the phone. I said, you know what? I said, I'm not really worried about that house. It's a rental house that nobody's living in. And I said, I've went above and beyond for you. And I kind of snapped back at him. And his wife reached out, texted me, and said, oh, my gosh, sorry to hear about your little girl. Like, prayers for her. And unfortunately, we ended up in uh, Riley with her for a day, and everything's fine and whatnot. But... That was like that one time that like I had to stand up for myself and be like, absolutely not, dude. Like you're not, I'm a young kid. I know to you, but I've still delivered every promise that I've, I've done every promise that I, that I, that I told you about, you know? So, I mean, unfortunately, um, you know, people want to complain that these kids don't want to work these days. But then they're the same ones that are in there trying to rip you off on something or complaining that you're six dollars higher than yeah, exactly. the chain or whatever. And it's like, take your money to the chain company yeah. then if that's what you know, if that's what you want, right. you know. So Yeah, I got a, I got a couple people like that that come in and, and they never they'll never get their oil changed, but they'll always come in and oh, can you check my oil or whatever? And I'm always like, Yeah, of course. I got this one older gentleman that comes in, he does that all the time. I mean, probably two, three times a week. And uh and he's like, well, how much does an oil change cost? And I told him, I was like, it's probably 65, 70 bucks somewhere in there. He's like, well, I can get it done 50 something bucks at Walmart. And I was like, Walmart's not the one that helps you out every time, you know? I mean, I didn't actually say that, but that's what I was thinking. I didn't. Yeah, actually, sooner or later you'll say that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just, I'm trying to hold it as long as I can for now, but it's like, you're helping a local business out and Walmart doesn't need it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know? I mean, Walmart, there's a place for Walmart, but, you know, absolutely, you know. Um, and, you know, one thing that the bigger you get, the more success you have. Uh, another sad thing is there will be certain people that are rooting for you now. And then when you get to that next level, all of a sudden they don't like you. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's like, what? What? Oh, yeah. what the heck? Like, you were rooting for me when I was struggling, but now that I'm kind of over that hump, you know, mm-hmm. um, it just, it helps, you know, they don't seem to want to root for you. But. Yeah, exactly. So one thing that I want to compliment you on is I believe uh, Bobby Ann got her oil changed on Valentine's Day. And she said that, like, you gave everybody a rose yeah. that got their oil changed. I mean, that's, I'm a huge, I'm a business guy. Like, I always want to, I'm always telling the team, think outside the box, think outside the box. Like, the small details you have to do, like mm-hmm. you have to communicate, you have to be consistent, whatever that is. But, you know, something like that is extremely unique um, that I was like, and that's when I said, I need to get him on my podcast. <laughs> so what other um, unique things are you do um, off the, you know, off from the ordinary do you do to kind of help set your business apart? Um, well, we do parades. I mean, um, we set up on the square and have our little booth set up with our tent. And that actually is a part owner in Jimmy John's. So on Saturdays, last summer, every time we would grill out and give people burgers and stuff when they'd come in. And then uh, when the wintertime hit, he'd be giving free sandwich coupons to Jimmy John's. So, uh, yeah, we're always looking for little stuff like that because that's really little things that matter because... You know, they come in there not expecting to get a rose or yep. a free meal or something. So when it happens, they, that's all they think about. You know? Well, and A, they're going to come back. But B, like when they when they post a picture of like, 
I'm getting, I got my oil changed today and, you know, they had hamburgers on the grill or whatever. Yeah, um, exactly. You know, one thing we're always striving for is called raving fans. Like, you know, like them fan, them people that are always talking about you. Um, mm-hmm. One pops up in my mind. We just got helped her with an insurance claim. We fought State Farm since the end of March. And uh, I ended up seeing a screenshot of the post that she made last week, just like bragging about our the project manager, Chris, that was on it. Uh, me and my wife, uh, we stopped by a couple times just to check in on a project. Fortunately for us, it was right down the road. We can't stop in on every project. We just right. got too many going. But that was one that was close, you know, um, right down the road, literally from our house. Um, and that was cool to see that post because, like, I looked at that time. It had, like, 38 likes and five or six comments. Like, you can't buy that advertisement oh, nowhere. Yeah. No matter where you're spending your advertisement money at, somebody that's ranting and raving about you. Then, of course, the lady worked in Connersville Hospital. My wife worked there years ago before we had kids, and two people that she works with used to work with my wife. It's like, oh, my gosh, we just love Emily. So, like, once again, like, now we're in their mind yeah. of, like, you know, make sure you make sure you call them guys for your roofing needs. Or, like I said, like, if you're doing um, – Yeah, if you're doing free sandwiches or grilling out or something like that, like that's just going to help you, you know, generate. It's just going to help you generate more business. So I I think it's really important um, doing that kind of stuff because it's not like every time you do do that for someone, they're going to post about it, you know. So I think it's like every ten people you help, one person's going to say something about it. So I try to do, I try to do that kind of stuff as much as I can, and all the little things count really so oh absolutely so uh previous owner give you them ideas or did you come up with them yourself Uh, my dad me my mom we have a marketer we're all always thinking of ideas but no the previous owner didn't really do nothing like that he was just he was a real nice homegrown guy yeah oh absolutely yeah so uh so who's the marketing brain between you your dad your mom we have actually a marketer emily Steele. okay does it most of it um Dad and mom always have a bunch of ideas just because they've been doing it so long. So um, I'll come up with some things sometimes. They're just like, that's stupid. Don't do that. So, <laughs> but we're always thinking of stuff. So so what's that stupid thing that you came up with that you thought was oh, a gosh, good idea? Been so many. And your parents were like, no, don't do it. I don't even know if I can. I have to think on that one. I'll shoot you a text later and let you know. <laughs> It's funny because I just had a meeting with Bobby and Adam um, is the marketing team for us. And, we you know, one thing that we the one thing I always hear is 50 percent of your marketing dollars you're throwing away. Mm-hmm. You just don't know what 50 percent is. Yeah. So like you've got to, you know, and we were having conversations earlier about ROIs and stuff like that. And I just said there's some of this like. I'm extremely passionate. Me and my wife are the Dave Ramsey principals um, getting that curriculum in the school because not everybody's going to use algebra. However, like everybody should know what kind of car insurance they need. Yeah. You know, the stuff that that class, you know, absolutely every single high schooler should have to have that. Oh, yeah. I didn't even I didn't even know how to write a check when I got out of right. high school. You know? Right. Which my parents taught me all that. But that's why I, I, I like being all hands-on and stuff because I I was dumb in school but I was smart in the real world yeah. right so right because if I was uh, I got all A's in algebra but I didn't know how to you know change oil or work on an engine or something I'd be screwed yeah I yeah know what to do. well and you know and everybody has their different unique you know you uh, enjoy yeah. you enjoy changing oils and, well, there's, and nothing, there's nothing wrong with people that are start, start right. school they're going to college and do great things hopefully but right it's just not what i was into i don't think a lot of kids are from where i'm from right so. right well and you know and that's why i ask if you've always been a gearhead uh, not to uh, stereotype you but you know like you you have to enjoy that you know um what what's going on and you know all that kind of stuff so so uh the marketer that you use does she do marketing for just your family or does she do marketing for other companies too i know she does for other companies i don't know what though i can't I can't recall any, but yeah, she does multiple okay. companies. No, that's cool. Is she a local girl from the Greensburg area? She's from Milroy. Okay. So okay. Between here and Greensburg. Yeah. So. Yep. Absolutely. What um, What are some new marketing strategies that you're coming up with to just you know to s- differentiate yourself from the competition or things you've tried lately? Um, like I said, parades. That's a big thing. Just getting out, having my face in local events. Yep. Really. So. Um, you know, Babylon's not going out and setting up a tent on the square and 
giving out merch and stuff like that. So I, I try to get out there as much as I can. So do you have much support from your vendors on stuff like that or not? Yeah, actually, I can. I mean, we use Lucas Soils, so I can call my vendor anytime and say, send me merch, and he'll just load me up, all kinds of stuff. You know? Nice. So, yeah, they, they give me whatever they can. So. No, that's that's per, that's perfect because I know um, – with us and our vendors, with our suppliers, especially the shingle manufacturers, like they, they all have some pretty good programs and, mm-hmm. you know, are willing to help you out. And I mean, it's just, it's, it's co-branding for them. Like we're pushing their name as much as we're pushing, you oh, know, yeah. our name. So that's, you know, I just didn't know in your world, you know, how much kind of support and, you know, staff, because I also know that you got to have the right rep, sales rep on that kind of stuff to actually value the relationship with you, a set of the bigger contracts that they have, unfortunately, you right, know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, my my guy's been he has some big contracts like IMI and stuff like that, and he's been he's been real good with me. So with I don't I know I don't know what other small businesses he does. It's smaller than mine, honestly. But right, you know, he he always puts me first, so I I really appreciate that. And uh, which we even do like he gives us these little things you can fill out when you get your oil change. You can get ten bucks back on synthetic and five by rebate. So people like that a lot, um, and I, what we always get like big boxes of pins. I don't know if you've seen it in our pins that have oil in them. Yep. So we give those out anytime we can to everyone that comes in. So yeah, we we try and I try and give some something to set everybody that comes in just so they have it, you know, because the more they're looking at, it, the more they're thinking of it. Which, so yeah, I try to push it as much as I can. Absolutely. What um. Man, I had a really good question on the tip of my tongue, but I wanted you to finish that, and then of course I forget it. Um, so, so then the nice thing about the bailing rebate—that's all through done through the manufacturer. So, like once you give them the receipt and everything, like you don't yeah, have so to do anything, right? I'll take the receipt and I'll take the rebate. All I gotta do is staple it to the receipt, yep. and then I'll mail it out. Then, oh, you'll even mail yeah, it. Yeah, I mail it out, and then they handle the rest. Nice customer service there. Yeah. Like you know, uh, that that's awesome, man. I mean, honestly, like because. That's what we have to do. Like some people want to sit and complain that big corporations taking over, um, but the small business still has the heart and soul. The small business still cares about whoever that is. Like we, this is crazy and people are going to think that we're nuts, but um, a gentleman just got here last night, moved his family from North Carolina, um, his wife and one and three year old to come and work for us. Um, And he was working for corporate America and he's tired of it. So like, you know, the, the heartbeat is still there where people want to, people still want to be, um, there's some people that are totally wrapped up still in like, oh my gosh, the bon- the benefit package over there is just so awesome. Yeah. You know, and I actually had a, a financial guy I argued with, he was trying to sell me on his stuff and wasn't doing a very good job at it, if I'm being honest with you. And he's like, well, you're going to have to provide all these benefits for these people. And I said, or I could care about them and I could show up, you know, when their dad passes away and give them an extra week off or whatever like that, like that corporate America just doesn't care. Like they're not going to be there. You know, they're not going to send them a, you know, most of, they're not going to send them a text on a Sunday afternoon. Like, Hey, how are you? You know, just because I know you're, you've been struggling with, a a divorce or, you know, losing a grandparent or losing a parent or something like that where, you know, where we care enough that, you know, we can, we can do stuff like that. So. Exactly. Yeah. I've had my fair share of of big sales reps trying to come in and uh, I know when I was setting up the business to begin with, we had one that come in he was, we were talking about transmission services where we take the transmission paint off and change the filter inside, which a lot of like valve and all and all it is drain the fluid and put new fluid in it. And it goes through that trans filtering is dirty again. There's no point in doing it. It's just a way to make money. And I was talking to him about that, and I was, and he was telling me about how I should do this and that. And I was like, "Do you want me to change the transmission filter?" And he's like, "He'd never heard of it before." And I, that just that just lost me. And I was like, "You're in this to make money. I'm in this to help people." You know, right? I mean, we're all in this to make money, but I, I want to do it the right way. Well, and there's a there's a famous quote by Zig Ziglar that says, "If you help enough people, you'll never have to worry about money." Yeah. If you change enough oil, you'll never have to worry about money. Mm-hmm. If if we do enough roofing or exterior projects or whatever, like I'll never have to worry about money, you know. And it's it's cool when you can like see that, you know, um, down the road. Like okay, like I I see this. Like I literally just ran into a lady that's known me for several years, and she's like, 
today. She's like, oh my gosh. She's like, I'm so happy to see the success you're having. And I see your guys is, I see you guys everywhere. I'm like, yep. We just hired number seven sales rep, uh, you know, this past week. And she's like, do what? (laughs) And I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't really go out and, you know, I don't go out on sales calls anymore unless it's here or there, you know, um, Every once in a while, they're just totally swamped, or I just want to jump in a truck with them because I'm tired of be- <laughs> being yeah, in the yeah. office, you know. So, what uh, do you uh, like? What's your been your biggest lesson? You think? Oh, I don't even know if I can answer that. I have to think on that. Yeah, next question. <laughs> I don't know. There's so many. Well, give me one. Um. Well, like employees, I know that employees, your best employee for the first week. And then after that, they start to fade off. So I'm not really the best at training yet. So I got to I gotta do better at that. So we're going to try number five here and see how it goes. But So what are you changing on the next training on the next one? I don't think I'm, I'm hard. I'm not as hard on them as I should be. I'm, I'm really laid back, which is okay. But I just don't think I did, I'm laid back the right way. You know, I kind of. I tell them what I expect, and then if they don't do what I expect, I don't really say nothing. So yeah, I need to be harder. Yeah, I mean, you just you've got to be. One thing that we've learned lately as a company, um, something that I we try to hone on is like clear, specific communication, mm-hmm. and that cures about ninety percent of. <laughs> Any any problems, you know. Well, yeah, because um, if you know your employee's thinking something and he doesn't tell you, and yep. then it just builds and, up in him, and, and vice versa with us as oh, yeah. leaders. Yeah. Like it's like, no, like you know, uh, me and Adam. Like I text him something earlier, and I swore I said that, and he swore or there was a miscommunication. Yeah, not a big deal, but I was just like, hey, next time make sure we do that. And then I put it in my back of my mind, like, okay, next time I got to make sure you know I. You know, I put that out there. Then I did a text later to the whole group, and I just put, will the 25th or 26th work? And somebody's like, well, I'm assuming we're talking about August. I'm like, yes, we're talking about <laughs> August. But I didn't put August, you yeah. know. Um, so, you know, that's that's all right. You know, like I said, it's it's learning. Like, you're going to learn. You're going to make a lot better hires in a year or two um, than you are right now, and that's okay. Like, mm-hmm. been there, done that, got the T-shirt. Like, you know, um, yeah, and, and that's something else that I've I've tried to do better in lately is look at a scenario, look at a problem, and say, how did I cause that? Yeah. Like, you know, um, did I not have a hard conversation with that person? Did I not tell that person clearly? You know, however that looks. So yeah. what is um, – so you like doing the parades, setting up, you know. Well, I never say I like doing it. You don't like doing it. <laughs> I don't like the getting ready part. I like doing it, but that's only a quarter of the work is doing it. So will any of your vendors ever help you with that kind of stuff or not? Like actually well, send somebody? No. Okay. No, they'll just, I just tell them I got it coming up and they'll just load me up with merch. Okay. So I can okay. throw it out. But um, yeah, like it's, it's not really worth it in the end, but it, I shouldn't say that. That's not what I meant by that. It's, it's worth it. It's just, the time you put into it worth what you get out of it isn't yep. worth it, but I just I like being out there. Yep. I like doing it. I think it's important for sure. Oh, absolutely. So what is what is some other community involvement that you do to, to get your name out there? Um, are you doing any kind of give back, um, that kind of stuff? And I know your business is still young, and you're extremely young yourself, so, you know. Um, we don't really do much else. Um, I mean, yeah, we had a car show few weeks ago i want to do another one of those that turned out okay um but yeah just parades and i try and get in as much stuff as i can with all local events so we're with the chamber of commerce and they do all kinds of events on the square so they're always letting us know this is coming up and we should do that and so yeah we try to get in there as much as we can but Got old Don over there hounding you at the chambers, huh? Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're chamber members, too. Don Don in the Greensburg does a really freaking good job oh, yeah. with their chamber. Yeah. Uh, you know, she loves that, um, and she works her tail off on that. Yeah, so she does good. That's, uh, that's, that's fun to see. That's actually kind of um, – that was one reason we got uh, Garrett, um, our production guy that you're, you're buddies with, right? Mm-hmm. 
Or you, you at least claim you know Garrett or yeah, something. Yeah, I'll so. claim I know him. I'm not much more. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what, um, how can we support you? Um, you know, kind of give a, you know, let us know where you're located at, you know, your hours or stuff like that. So if somebody's in that area needing an oil change with, you know, with exceptional customer service, somebody that's going to go above and beyond, um, how can, you know, how can we drive some traffic your way? 755 West Main Street, Greensburg, Indiana. We're across from the laundromat uh, over by Co-op. And I don't know what else is big over there. But, uh, yeah, our hours are we, we're 8 to 6, Monday through Friday, and then Saturday 8 to 4. And we'll stay open till 7 if, if you can't make it in 6. I'll If you call and let me know, I'll stay up until 7 to change your oil. So, so are you over there by um, where Fogg's got the grain? Um yeah, yeah, yep. I, I worked for Fogs many moons ago, so yeah. <laughs> I kind of know. I know. I know that area there. Yeah. So, but anything else? Any other words of wisdom to leave with our listeners? I don't have any wisdom. You're the one with all the wisdom. Uh, I don't. I don't know about that, brother. But now, seriously, if you're in Greensburg and you, uh, like I said, you want somebody that's going to go above and beyond and, and take care of you, um, go go give this young man some business and uh, just you know, you know. Be a, be a nice customer, you know, go in there and yeah. compliment them for being a hardworking young man and, you know, uh, you know, not complain about pricing and just, yeah. you know, help somebody out that's, you know, that's out there making a difference and, you know, chasing that American dream. Yep. All right. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you, sir. Thank you.